Hello, everyone. Welcome into another episode of the Found Generation podcast. An honor to once again be joined by Hillary Strano. Hillary, had you on the show around this time last year. It was the first time that we had spoken in a decade. We went to Coda Middle School together. I get very nostalgic this time of year, so I was thinking of you. So I wanted to reach out and have you back on, not only because we had a great 40, 45 minute podcast conversation, but then afterwards, if you remember, we spoke for two or three hours afterwards, catching up, talking shit, you know, getting filled in on, on all the drama. And I told you that I would have to have you back on because you lead this crazy life where you move about all the time. Life is a travel nurse. You move every couple months to a, to a new spot, just wherever the world takes you. And I knew that I need to have you back on, get all the tea, get caught up on what is going on in your life. So Hillary, thank you for being here. How are you? Yes. Thank you for having me. I'm good. I guess I'm a failed travel nurse because I'm still in Austin. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> what uh, I wanted to start off with. So just to uh, recap here and correct me where I'm wrong. So you've lived you've lived all over the place. So yes, you know, you kind of grew up early on in New York, right? In different parts mm-hmm. of New York. You lived in Buffalo for a bit, right? Yes. Yeah. And then the Albany area where I met you, Clifton Park, best time of your life, I'm sure. And then you went and moved away from us. And then you moved, where was it? Was it to Kansas? Can- yeah, Kansas City. You moved to Kansas City. And then you went to undergrad at North Dakota. Yes, University of North Dakota. University of North Dakota. And then after that, you, you bounced around Nebraska, New Jersey, uh, and then in Austin? Yes. Okay. Basically, yeah. Okay, so you're still in Austin. And this is the, is this the longest that you've been in one spot for, so what has it been like a year? Is this the longest that you've been in a spot in your adult life, not including college? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think before that, maybe like nine months was, eight months, eight months was the longest I'd lived anywhere. Okay. So, so it's so why, crazy. Why have you elected to stay here? What's going on here? Are you Okay. I'm doing great. I actually love Austin, which I did not expect to love Austin. I thought Texas was like, yeehaw, and cowboys. And I think a lot of Texas is, but Austin's a really cool spot. Okay, yeah. I mean, I understand that Austin is pretty different from the rest of Texas. I'm sure you've made it to other parts of the state uh, at this point. So what makes Austin so special? So Austin's like the new, I guess, the new Denver. It's like a big transplant city. Everyone's moving in from everywhere. So it just has this like really unique like culture here. And it's also a really cool spot if like you're in your 20s and 30s because like everyone's moving here with like smaller circles looking for friends. Like, you know, it's like a big sense of like community here because mm. everyone kind of understands where everyone else is. What is the, what are a lot of people who are moving there? What is their work? Is it, is it becoming a new business hub? Is that what's going on? Yeah. I think like Google's here. Apple's here. Meta is here. Tesla is going to be here. So Uh, all the, all the tech people are making their way over. Okay. All right. So what has been the highlight for you so far? Um, so when I moved here, I kind of had to like, I just started completely over, but right before I moved here, I went through a breakup and I was like, I need a new life. I need to like reinvent everything. And so I moved here knowing like one girl. So now like looking back, I have like this, a great group of friends. Like, you know, I've really like established myself here. I've gotten into like mental health, like physical health. Like I think I've just come so far in the past year. So how did you go about making friends aside from that one friend? So I only really saw that one friend that I I moved here banking on knowing this one girl. She was going to be like my anchor and it didn't work out that way. Wait, wait, wait. wait. How close were you guys before moving here? We were close in college and then kind of lost touch and then like briefly like became friends again. And then I was like, I'm going to move to Austin. So, I mean, it was probably more me like jumping the gun, but (laughs) like we'll be best friends again. It'll be great. But yeah, so I met almost, I met my one best friend here on Bumble BFF, which is great. It's funny. Um, I don't, actually, I know a lot of girls here that are on Bumble BFF, but I remember going into it. I'm like, this is weird. You know, you're swiping on girls. Um, you know, it's like, no, I don't want you to be my friend. Like, yeah, you could potentially be my friend. But um, so I ended up meeting one of my best friends, Marin. She threw a, like a Bumble BFF pregame. 
which was like a really cool wow. idea of her. Yeah, it was really smart. So I went to this pregame and there was like 12 girls who like didn't know each other. <laughs> and so, you know, it was like really, it was like speed dating for like friends, you know, because you got to meet 12 new people who are also looking for friends and then kind of like see where you click and see like who you like vibe with. And it was cool. That's pretty ballsy. I, I, I like that idea. It takes yeah. quite a lot, quite a lot of guts to put together an event. So what are you looking for in a, at a Bumble BFF profile? What what would make you swipe left? Is that the good swipe? Swipe left. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I think left is, is the good swipe. I think so. Let's go with that. So what like would make you swipe s- left? Um, I think I looked for girl. <laughs> like, who am I looking for? Um, <laughs> you know, I don't even know. I only had it for I had it for one day. I downloaded it that morning. Like, you know, swiped on girls. Like, I think I swiped on almost all of them. I'm like, I can't be picky here. Like, <laughs> I have no friends. And so me and Marin matched. And then she sent me a message like, pregame tonight. Here's my phone number. Do you want to come? And so, yeah. Were you scared about going and, and meeting all these people? Because, again, I mean, at the end of the day, these are strangers on the internet. Yeah, oh, yeah. And so I called my mom. Like, this is what I'm getting. My mom's like, are you going to get, like, traffic? Like, are you sure this is weird? So, you know, had location on, like sending my mom like updates, like alive, we're good. <laughs> Normal. Okay, so what was the the Bumble party like? Was there some type of icebreaker games or, or what? How does that work? So I obviously didn't have any friends. So I went alone, but a lot of girls like brought another friend with them. Or so then you just like introduced and everyone kind of like came. It started at like, I don't know, like say eight or whatever. And people kind of like slowly like staggered in. So when you walked in, you just like introduced everyone, everyone and started the conversation and kind of just like it was just like drinking before the bars. Right. OK, that's that's a really cool idea. I love that. All right. So you've you've established a life here. You've got a lot of friends here. You said yeah. that you're working on your your mental and physical health. Is that something that you weren't? really working on before you got to Austin? So before I came to Austin, I was kind of in this, I'm not going to like say anything. It wasn't a great relationship. Um, and so I was just really sad and like, I was dealing with like anxiety and depression and, you know, going to see therapy, which I like recommend everyone to do. And, you know, which is really cool. Now looking back as my therapist was like, start a journal, like just like word vomit into your journal. So I started doing that and I just like finished my first journal ever. And I like went back and I read some of it. I mean, some of it, when you read back, you're like, Ooh, like yikes. But, and it was just like, it's so cool to see how far you've come. You know, like I was, I kind of had to work a lot on like self love and like building my own confidence and, you know, not like relying on like guys, men's approval and men's like what men say about me to like be confident. And you so, felt yeah, like and you had struggled with that before. Yeah. Like I felt like a lot of times my like self-worth is, was reliant on people thinking I was pretty or like being like objectively attractive to men, which is like, it's a terrible place to, to find yourself and put yourself because you're kind of at like the mercy of others at that point. And so I started just like working on that, going to therapy, you know, like working on my own self-confidence, you know, like working out in a way that like I love, like we talked about like Pilates, like I love that workout. But before I was running because that's what like, you know, you do. That's what they say you do. Like that's the kind of physical health you need to be a runner. So yeah, just kind of working on all that and just seeing how far like I've come and I've never like been the person that was like, I'm proud of myself. Like I look at what I did, but journaling has like allowed me to kind of like start doing that and like being proud of myself. Would you be able to tell us what kind of the first day that you journaled? What is something, I mean, obviously not word for word, but what was the tone of what you were writing then? Oh, like broken, sad. Like, you know, I was in this relationship and I thought I was going to marry him. And like, I had this whole like thought of what my life was going to be. And I, when I was in the relationship, I found it was like one of those things. It's like, do you like, continue to break your own heart and stay or do you like you move on and you get you know you like rebuild yourself and so it was just sad and it was also me just like accepting that like that 
wasn't going to be my, my future, but also that I was proud of myself for, you know, it's really easy to stay in relationships. And a lot of people find themselves like staying because they're like scared of what's on like the other side. So yeah, it was sad. <laughs> what, what made you decide to go to therapy? Um, I was in new, when I was living in New Jersey there, I, my anxiety was so bad. I was like sleeping like two hours a night and I was not eating and not purposely not eating. I was like, I could not like even think about or like stomach the idea of food. And I didn't even think that I was, I didn't feel hungry either. It kind of just always felt like my stomach was like in a knot and I couldn't sleep at night. And I just, I was like, this is terrible. My mom's like, look, like you look awful. (laughs) (laughs) You need to. Yeah. Right. Right. She like saved me. And in that regard, I'm like, she's like, you need to talk to someone because I don't know what demons like you're facing right now. Cause you won't tell me because I wasn't letting anyone in at that point. And she's like, but you need to like, you need to talk to someone. So what in your um, conversations with therapists, what are the biggest things that you've learned about yourself? Um, I think, you know, no one leaves like childhood unscathed, but it's kind of like the things that like affected you that you didn't even really, you know, your ideas of the world and your ideas of people, how they like still influence you as like an adult. Code of middle school. Yeah. A lot rough. Of trauma there. <laughs> <laughs> rough time. I mean, middle school in general, I don't know. I mean, I think I've suppressed like the hell out of code of middle school, but you know, middle school is awful. Did you struggle in middle school? I think I did. Oh, I thrived. I, I, I think you did too. I mean, you came to my birthday party, so. Hell yeah. Best birthday party but, ever. Yes. Um, no, I think for me it was hard. You know, I moved around so much as a kid. And even when I got somewhere, I felt like it didn't really matter, like, who I was or who my friends were because I was just going to move again, which, like, ended up being true. You know, so as a kid, I kind of had this, like, like, F you mentality, like, you know, and I didn't really know who I even was. So I feel like I was very influenced by the people I hung out with, like, right. you know, so I was like, I need friends like, oh, you, this girl likes, I don't even know this, like this girl loves my space. I'm in my space till I die. <laughs> we should bring it back. Um, I, so this is something that I'm curious about and and I've gone to therapy too. I know, I know a lot of friends that have it's crazy how much it, everything goes back to the childhood. And I'm not sure where I stand on having kids. Like it, it's nowhere near the top of my mind right now. Will I ever, I don't know. I'll probably get interested in it at some point, probably because of external <laughs> pressures. But right. I just feel like there is so much pressure to make sure that your that you don't mess up your kid's childhood because that will affect the rest of their lives as you and I are learning are there any that that if you have kids, like what from your childhood are you going to make sure? What what mistakes are you going to make sure that you don't repeat with your children? Right. Oh God, I don't even, you know. And I will like I had like a very great childhood. Like I have like the best mom in the world. Like I love her, and I think that I just maybe would create more stability. Um, like even now when people are like, Oh, where are you from? I'm like, well, I mean, like, <laughs> I, the longest I've lived anywhere is like three years. And so it's like, I don't have a hometown. Like I don't have like, you know, that kind of like stability. I didn't, you know, know people my entire life. Um, kind of stuff like that. So I think I try to make life a little more stable. Are you craving stability right now? I like go back and forth. But at the same time, I feel like I am appreciative that I move so much because now I live this life where I just get up and go and I'm not worried about, you know, making friends. I'm not worried about what I'm going to do or like living in a new city because I've done it my entire life. But does any part of you feel like you want to be in Austin for years to come? Yeah. And that's the other thing. It's like, but do I like, I have created this and like worked so hard to create this life that I live now. Um, with like the people around me, the support systems, like the routine, the like familiarity, like what I do want to stay. So then I like struggle, but then I'm like, but I could go like, (laughs) I 
I, I'm so glad you said that because because <laughs> I, I struggle with that too. So I'm rehabbing um, from surgery right now, and I'm just back at my parents' home in Clifton Park. My lease in New Hampshire ended a day after I got my surgery. So I'm in between locations right now and trying to figure out what my next step is going to be because I did work hard to build a life in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I loved my yoga studio. I, I made a lot of friends <laughs> and like I, I yeah. there's so much I loved about the culture of that town. And I can see myself living there a while, but there is also so many other places that I want to go. I like you can pick up and go very easily and not be heartbroken by it. It's it's an interesting dynamic because you want to like the place that you're in, but you also don't want to get too attached to it. You kind of stop yourself yeah. from getting too attached to it because you know in the back of your mind, like I might be gone in four months. So you you also stop yourself in a way. Do you struggle with that? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like the one thing I will say about Austin that kind of also like helps me is because so many people have moved here and so many people are like in their tw like mid twenties, early thirties. Like I think there's like a, everyone is kind of here short term. Like I don't think many people plan on like living here, you know, for the rest of their life. Maybe some do, but you know, I have friends who are from New York city who are like, Oh yeah, I'll go back to New York in a little bit. Like, you know, so it's like, it's that halfway spot where it's like, you know, you can stay here for a while, but you don't stay here for forever. But then six, it's like, where would I even go after? I don't know. Right. Six months from now, <laughs> where where is Hillary Strano? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, my whole plan was I'm going to come here three months, wait for my California license. Be, I'm going to be a like, cool L.A. girl. Then I was going to, like, move to Hawaii. And so, you know, I don't I've stopped planning life at this point. I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> why, why have you stopped? <laughs> I, you know, because every time I make a plan, I feel like it's just like life is like, jokes like good good one like you're gonna come here for three months like no you're not I haven't even applied for my California nursing license still like you know um you think you're gonna marry a, a boy no you don't like you know you think you all these things I when I was 16 by this point I was gonna be like married two kids like picket fence like the American dream and right. now I'm like you know swiping for friends so <laughs> Does any part of you feel not guilty is not the right word, but, but like a failure for not having those things? Um, I feel like I was like, thinking, I think I was talking about, some, talking about this with someone the other day. It's like social media makes it so easy to like compare yourself to other people. And we were talking about this, like, and I'm guilty of it too. And like, obviously if I'm guilty of it, I, other people are guilty of it. Like, you know, I'll post when I made my hundredth like Pilates class, but like, when I had an anxiety attack last week, I wasn't obviously like, you know, going Instagram live about it. So like, I know that my social media life is very fake. Um, but then you see people getting engaged and you're like, oh, like, should, should I be doing that? Like, should that be like my number one priority right now? Or, you know, people getting these raises or changing careers or like buying a house. Like I can't even decide where I want to live. How would I ever buy a house? You know? So I do like, struggle like with that like what is a priority right now to me and I think I know and then I go on social media and then it's like oh no look at all these other things that everyone else is doing that I have to do when you yeah. catch yourself making those comparisons how do you shut them down um well I kind of remind myself of what I do you know like I remember when I was in my previous relationship like in the like the bad bad times I was still posting our like date nights. Like, you know, I'm very guilty of it. So like, you know, I remind myself if I'm acting like that, so is everyone else. So I'm not saying that people aren't excited that they're engaged or buying a house. I'm just saying that, that I'm looking at the highlights of their life and not the reality, the reality of their life. It's a part of you always kind of on edge because, you know, like three months to three month contracts is always like, it's so soon. And if you're going to move, it takes a bit of time to plan a move. It, like, obviously, you know, you're not getting massive moving trucks and whatnot, but you got to find an Airbnb because that's your thing. You got to find an Airbnb to do long term. You got to make some arrangements. So it's a part of you just kind of always wondering, like, all right, is this three month contract the last one? And then I got to figure it out. Yeah. Well, and also, I'm like too spontaneous for my own good. Like, honestly, like the day after we signed that contract, like, you know, the wind blows the wrong way. I could be like, no, I'm out, you know? 
So, but I do have my own apartment now. Wow, really? I know, and I I have furniture. I have a bed and a table, which is crazy. That you, that you own, you so, purchased that stuff. That I own. I own wow. a bed. Wow, you know? look at you. You're moving up in the world. Okay, why get the apartment? So, like every really fun city, it's not fun living prices. Yeah. So, when I was living in my Airbnb the it was so expensive and then i came back and i was like i'm gonna can i like sign this for another three months They're like yes but prices are going up um it's 4200 a month now yeah and i was like <laughs> i was like oh no and so i started looking at other airbnbs and like you know people were like oh yeah you can live in my one room in a family's home it was just got a little weird and so i ended up the girl who had Bumble BFF pregame, she lives in this apartment complex. And she was like, you know what? You should look and see like the studios. And so I looked and it was so much. I mean, it's still very expensive, but like comparison at the time, it was like a steal. And how, so now, sorry, what are you saying? How long is your lease? It was for six months. And then they were like, um, a few months ago, they were like, hey, you have like, 30 days to decide or we're like, you know, putting your place up. And so I, that day was like, okay, whatever. And I signed a year lease. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I know. You are are spontaneous. Yeah. So do you intend on keeping that year lease? I don't even know. (laughs) I don't, maybe, I don't know. Because I still do, I would love to travel still. And, you know, part of me, like, wish, you know, I wanted to always live in California. Like, you know, try it out. You know, I watched a lot of reality TV in my, you know, high school and, like, college years. Like, I I think I would, yeah, I don't know how much I would love L.A., but I think I need to, like, try it out. But it's, like, a whole other animal, that city. I don't know. I'm actually going to Los Angeles in two weeks for the second time ever. I went when I was like four years old, so I don't remember. So I'm very excited. I will, I'll write back yeah. to you to, to let you know how it is. Yes. Because it's the I've place to be once. in my industry. Like, that's yeah. where everyone is. So a part of me is like, oh, should I go out to Los yeah. Angeles, see what I'm really made of? I know. I think I heard that LA is the place if you, I, and this is like mean, I, this is like satire, but I was like, LA is the place if you hate yourself and New York City is the place if you hate others. <laughs> okay, that makes sense based on yeah, everything I've, right. on everything I've yeah. experienced in New York and heard about Los Angeles. You're right. But, you know, I love Los Angeles because they had in and out but now Austin has in and out too. So mm. there goes that motivating right. factor. Right, Austin's trying to keep you, so they got the in and out well Yeah, done. they knew. They Did, knew the weakness. I um, So the travel nurse lifestyle, we talked a, uh, a lot about it on the show last time, so we don't need to rehash it. But I talked to a friend recently who um, is a nurse, has dabbled in travel nursing as well. And she says that the industry right now is just an absolute shit show. People are leaving left and right. People are quitting. You know, the people who are taking care of other people are being so overworked and all the systems are just, are just falling apart. Do you do you agree with that assessment? Oh, 100%. Um, it's crazy. I was a nurse before COVID and... When COVID happened, a lot of, like a lot of nurses quit. Um, You know, the older nurses quit because they were, you know, older. They were already kind of like one foot out the door and that kind of like pandemic sent them right through the door. Um, And then a lot of people were like, I don't want, you know, I have sick family members at home or whatever their circumstances were. They're like, no, you don't pay me enough. Like, nope, I'm not doing this. Um, But yeah, so we, I see that all the time. I feel nurses are so burnt out and, you know, we're now doing the jobs, you know, of multiple nurses, you know, like labor and delivery. So what I do used to be like one patient, one nurse, and now it's mostly two patients, two nurse. So you're doing double the amount of work. Um, the nurses who work for the hospitals, you know, they make the same amount of money as they did before. Um, you know, farm, like, you know, the pharmacy uh, techs are quitting. So then it falls on nurses, you know, some places like mix their own like medicine, like lab people are quitting. So now you're drawing your own lab. So nurses, like everything is falling, falling more and more onto them. And so more people are quitting and then they're paying travel nurses more money. And then staff nurses are leaving to become travel nurses or they're just, they're tired of it. They want to go be 
work in pharmaceutical sales or medical device sales or, you know, they're just like, they're just done. Everyone is just so burnt out. And then you have these new nurses coming in and they see all this and they're like, whoa, like, I didn't think this was what nursing was. So then they quit. And so it's terrible. Um, I have a bunch of friends who are nurses in Minnesota and they're like striking right now. Wow. Yeah. So, cause it's really unsafe for the patients. Um, yeah. Most. Yeah. And it's like your nursing license is on the line. And I feel like a lot of people, until you're in the hospital or you know someone in the hospital or you have a baby or you do anything like that, you like don't realize like how much nurses do. Is there any type of, and this might vary state by state, I'm not, not, not sure how this works, but is there any type of protection or safeguard against like nurse burnout or is there any care that you guys get? Because like you said, if you're overworking the nurses so much and the people who are responsible for taking care of other people, that can only hurt the people that they're taking care of. No, there is like, there's, I had a very, very traumatic shift um, a few months ago. And I remember someone, one of the management was like, and where I work now, it's a great hospital, great people and really good management compared to where I've like, been before. But she was like, make sure you take care of yourself. I'm like, cool. <laughs> I'll try, you know? So there's nothing you know, there's nothing really kind of going on there. Like they try to do, they come around like, what can we do for retention? And it's like, pay more, you know? And they're like, pizza party. Right. You know? So. Well, travel nurses get know. paid very well, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, double, basically double minimum your yearly salary, your like gross annual income as a nurse, um, which is obviously great for me. Um, and it's the same job, but it's also really sad. Like if you can pay me this much money, then why wouldn't you just prefer to pay all your nurses more money? Not necessarily like the same. I don't think they could do that, but pay them more money. Then they don't want to become travel nurses. Then they want to work for your hospital. Um, but it's again, American healthcare is a corporation. So, so that's where the issue lies. If you weren't in the medical field at all, what would you want to be in? I want to do like, hmm, what would I want to do? I always, I, when I was younger, I wanted to be like a psychiatrist. And then when I was in college, I was like, I'm having a little bit too much fun to study for organic chemistry. <laughs> and now that I work with doctors, I'm like, I absolutely do not want to be a doctor. Um, but I would like love to like, you know, somehow get like be in mental health or be like, um, be like a photographer, mm. like national geographic stuff. Like that would be cool. Really? Yeah. Like photojournalism. That'd be sweet. Interesting. Okay. You don't, uh, yeah. you don't want to be on TikTok. You don't want to be a TikTok creator. I, I don't know. I, I don't even know what I would do on TikTok. I can't dance. I, I don't think I could be that. I don't think I could be funny. Like, you know, in five seconds. Right. But, but I love TikTok. I mean, I like, I'm just doom scrolling all day. What, what does your TikTok feed look like? You know, you know, what's crazy is that, you know, when people are like, oh, they microchipped us with COVID stuff. Like our phones know us because I Seriously. feel like, like my TikTok feed, like if I'm, if I'm like sad over something, like just sad over, on TikTok, you know, like. If me and my friends are like talking about like a song, I swear every song on TikTok is about like, you know, like that thing is smart. Yeah. It knows how to get me. It's crazy. Like I'll be, oh, that, that podcast, you know, that didn't do as well as I would have hoped it would. And then boom, here's how to grow your podcast following in 20 days. Right. <laughs> right. It's crazy. It's like that you're already being trapped. Right. But I, I, you know, it's so funny. I heard this conspiracy theory. Um, that like different countries, TikToks look different um, mm. as far as like the content you see. So like um, it was talking about like in China, a lot of the TikToks are like skills and they, they teach you things. It's very like educational. And I don't know how true that is, but like American TikTok is like dancing and like, you know, like puppy videos, <laughs> and, you know, like the corn kid. And <laughs> so it's like this conspiracy that like, you know, other countries are getting smarter strategically while making Americans dumber and better that, dancers, I guess. That's a, <laughs> yeah, at least we got that going for us. That's a yeah. really good conspiracy, actually, because it makes sense, because TikTok is owned yeah. by a Chinese parent company. 
Yeah. So the wheels are. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I like love a good conspiracy theory, but. But you would never make your own videos on TikTok. No, I mean, I mean, I would love. Actually, my dream job would be like to be an influencer. Like these girls look like they have it made. Right. I mean, you know, but I don't know if I have like the guts, you know, mm. to start that journey. Yeah. You know. Can I ask you, I and I don't know if you're big into the the pop culture scene or whatnot, but I, I've been on a big, for some reason, a big Justin Bieber kick recently, uh, yeah. music-wise. And so then, naturally, I just start to learn about Hailey Bieber and that she's mm -hmm. a big deal in her own right outside of Justin. But I still don't get it. Why? Do you know why people love Hailey Bieber? I mean, the girl has 48 million Instagram followers. I think it started... Um, by people not liking her i like you know i think she kind of rose to the scene when she like started dating justin and all that stuff and people still love to hate her because the whole selena gomez thing but you know but then people are like wait this girl actually is like has perfect skin you know and she was like let me show you how to get my skin you know she kind of like started building her own brand of who she is mm, okay but, yeah these these girls are like strategic i think They're very smart who's your favorite influencer i like I emma chamberlain a lot i think she's cool oh she's cool there's that tiktok girl um her name's kenzie she's like blonde i'm not that good of a fan i like don't know her name but she's like really big on tiktok but she lives in austin i used to see her all the time at this like one coffee shop but yeah. she's pretty funny okay but they say she's the next emma chamberlain so oh okay Yes. Fascinating. Who is, I have favorite influencers. Why can't I think of who they are? I mean, I, I do love, I love Kendall Jenner. And she was just on a podcast, that Jay Shetty podcast. Oh, Kendall Jenner was on that? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Alex Cooper's on it next week. So I'm very fascinated about that. Uh, fascinated about that. Yes. But I don't, uh, Ken, Kendall Jenner's another one that I don't get. I also, like, hot take, I don't think she's that attractive. Really? really? Yeah. There's so many other people I would place above her. I, I remember someone telling me about Kendall Jenner. I'm like, you know what? I hear this name all the time. I've never actually seen her before. I looked her up and I'm like, this? The, this is the, the queen that all of you are aspiring to be? Yeah. Probably just a Victoria's Secret model. I think I follow, I still, like, from my teenage days, I still follow, like, the whole, like, 2013 Victoria's Secret show <laughs> cast <laughs> on Instagram. Those <coughs> girls are just, like, beautiful. Yeah. But it's a, I don't know. Who, I'm trying to think. I can't even think of influencers right now off the top of my head. All I know is that, like, these girls are, like, one post on Instagram, thousands of dollars. I'm like, oh. It's crazy, why right? Didn't I, why didn't I try harder? <laughs> if, <laughs> if you are an influencer, let's hypothet hypothetically yeah. say that you, you reach a dream goal, you are an influencer. What, what are you posting about? What's your... What's your, your genre? Okay. Well, I can't dance. Not well, at least. And, um, the only time I think I dance okay is when I'm like pretty drunk. So mm. I dancing wouldn't be my scene. I think I would have to go for like the witty humor, like tanks kind of, I would have to go that route would be okay. my only like avenue of success. And I'm not that fashionable. Um, and also those fashion girls spend so much money getting to where they were so to the point where they're making money and not just like spending all their money so i think i would have to try to like win over fans with humor i would definitely be like an inspirational a jay shetty type or something like yes. that that would definitely be my vibe or i always struggle between like not being like hippie enough to be like a yogi like <laughs> hippie like all natural and like I'm not hippie enough for that. And I'm not like bougie enough for like the bouginess. I'm like in the middle. So I <laughs> like probably like try to like combine those worlds. I feel like a lot of people fit. They're like, I love yoga, but like not a yogi, you know, I don't like, you know, eat like the raw vegans and all that stuff. And, you know, I can't meditate to save my life. I like, it's difficult. Them. It's Oof. really difficult. Have you, you tried before? I have tried and my mind just like, I don't know how they like peacefully meditate. I just like get like anxious. I'm like, oh, I got to do this. Oh my gosh, this happened. Like, right. I don't know how they do it. Well, the, the trick is 
thoughts like that are normal. And you're supposed to just let those thoughts come to you, notice them, and then try to flush them out of your minds until they inevitably come back. I think a good meditation session is just a constant, your thoughts intruding, and then you pushing them away and trying to be Zen. But I, I similarly also deal with that. Because after like, I'm a, like, I'm a busy guy. I'm like, I don't have two hours to meditate. I don't know how, <laughs> how you do this. 10 minutes is good. And even at the end of those 10 minutes, I always feel unaccomplished. I'm like, I thought so many different things during these 10 minutes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or even like in yoga, like I can't do like the, like the calm, like slow yoga. I'm like, antsy or they'll close your eyes I'm like one eye's open I'm like I still just breathing over here I'm breathing okay we're like you know like clear your mind I'm like oh no like I am riddled with things that I didn't even want to think about now (laughs) that's why I like I like a nice power yoga that's because like it's something that's moving pretty quickly so that I don't stay in one position too long and therefore have let my thoughts marinate for too long. Yes. Or that's why I like love the Pilates class that I'm doing now, like solid core or even like a hot power yoga. Like I need to like, I need stuff to be going. So like, I'm only thinking about like, Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm dying. Like whatever. So then it's like, you like kind of shut off the chaos of the world and you're like only focused on like you and what you're doing. And like your mind doesn't even have time to like think about things like that. Cause you're like, Oh my gosh, like I can't do this anymore. Like, you know, like you're trying to fight for your life. Shout out to you, by the way, for your 100th workout uh, at okay. Solid Core. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I know. I remember when I first started, I was like, this is so hard. And people would be like, it's their 100th class or like 200th class. I'm like, how did you like, how? And yeah. now I'm one of them. Look at you. Uh, all right, so I want to uh, to close out this this little conversation here with a little BuzzFeed quiz for you. And I don't know, I might have to take it too. I'm sharing my screen. Let's see how this works. Does this, do you see what I'm doing here? Yes. All right. So we're going to figure out which U.S. state (laughs) you belong in. It's just seven or eight questions. Okay. What's your favorite season? And this, I'll I'll read this out for the listeners as well. What's your favorite season? Winter, spring, summer, fall. Summer. What's your favorite food between pizza, tacos, seafood, and chicken? Seafood. What's your favorite sport? Volleyball, soccer, football, basketball? Uh, basketball. What's your favorite type of music? Pop, country, rap, rock? I guess pop. Didn't sound too confident. What's your favorite color? Blue, red, yellow, green? Green. What's your favorite social media platform? Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, or TikTok? TikTok. <laughs> Who's your favorite singer? Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber, The Weeknd, or Billie Eilish? The Weeknd. Shout out to Canada. Interesting. Is he Canadian? And why are we shouting out Canada? Because I'm Canadian. You're Canadian? Did I know that? Yeah. I probably didn't know that. Were you yeah. born? You're born in Canada. Yeah. Where? I moved to, uh, I was born in Calgary, but my family's all in Winnipeg, which is like the not fun part of Canada. <laughs> but yeah, that's where I lived before I moved to Albany. For how long? Five years. Wow. Okay. Anyway, uh, what's your favorite <laughs> fruit? Apple, orange, pineapple, grapes. Pineapple. Love a good pineapple. And finally, mm-hmm. what is your favorite holiday? Christmas, Fourth of July, Halloween, or Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving. All right. I love stuffing. It's the only reason. It's great. What state do you think you belong in? I don't know. Does it say Florida? I think I saw Florida. Yeah, you belong in Florida. <laughs> oh boy. You love warm weather and the beach. You're always down for a good time, no matter if it's heading to the ocean with friends, spending time outside, or enjoying the night out in the city. You despise winter and thrive best when you're tan all year long. You're more of a laid-back, chill person who just wants to live their best life. Is this accurate? Uh, Does this describe you? Yeah, I don't know if I'm a Florida girl, but... I mean, it sounds like you are. BuzzFeed said so. I, I guess so. I guess so. But yeah. Well, hopefully Florida does well. Hopefully there's a Florida to move to. Yikes. Yeah. Hopefully everyone uh, is okay. I'm actually going to take this this this, uh, yeah, this quiz too while, while I have you here. All right. So my favorite yes. season is fall. Favorite food of the um, pizza. Favorite I feel like you're go- it's going to say in New York. 
Bat- baseball that would be players. hilarious. Favorite sport, basketball. Favorite type of music. That's interesting. You said pop, yeah? Yeah. Who's your favorite pop artist? I don't know. I listen to all types of music, but I like definitely, I'm more of like a Lumineers, which I just went to their concert. Love Lumineers. Music. No way. Lumineers. That's awesome. It was amazing. It was like the best concert. Mumford and Sons. I don't know. what is that like indie rock? I don't yeah, know it's like, genre. Yeah, it's indie. Yeah. Uh, Mumford, so, I've know. seen them like three times. Favorite band. They Love broke Mumford. up. Oh, again? I, I, they're still not together then. Great. Uh, well, look at you. <laughs> favorite type of music. Yeah, I'm going to go pop as well by default. Favorite color. I like a nice blue. Favorite social media <laughs> platform. Oh, God, I, I love and hate them all. Um, Instagram. Favorite singer. Do you, still have, do you still have Snapchat? I do. And I snap about three people on it. Uh, <laughs> favorite fruit. Also a pineapple guy. Favorite holiday. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Halloween or Fourth Halloween? Because I love October. Oh, I belong in Colorado. I've lived there. It makes sense. Look at that. Sports and working back? out is my thing. You love staying active, and I enjoy cold weather. You probably also like skiing and snowboarding. You're the type of person who loves competition and winning things. You're very adventurous and spontaneous. You may come across as cocky to some people. However, your <laughs> confidence is amazing. Okay, I. I Hillary, based on uh, you know you knowing my middle school self, does this sound like me? I mean, you. I feel like I've never known you to be cocky, but yeah, I feel like everything else. I mean, but you live there and you moved, so why yeah. wasn't it your thing? Uh, it actually was my thing. I loved it. Oh, okay. Um, just the period when I went there was in the pandemic, and oh. uh, I would like my work situation was a little bit sus and in flux so i loved colorado yeah. but there was kind of a dark cloud hanging over my life while i was there so i now kind of have a negative association with uh, association with colorado yeah so i'm open to going back but i also need to do it with some people i'm, I'm not going to go yeah. there and bumble bff party like you yeah well you could i could I could. I've, I've heard the I've heard the boy side of Bumble BFF is yeah, I was, I was not about, the, not the same. Yeah, I was about to ask. I feel like it's different for girls. I also just feel like it's easier for women to make to become new friends as opposed to men. No. You think so? No way. No way. Guys are like football. Yeah, football. Yeah, <laughs> friends. Done. Right there and then. Like you like the office? Cool. Me too. Friends. I think it girls. I feel like girls, it's really hard to find quality girlfriends. You know, you can have tons of acquaintances, but it's hard to find the like, quality friends. So then I feel like when a, a quality friend group is formed, they kind of like shut every, everyone else out. You know, they're Interesting. like, you know, it's my, I think. Okay. That's, that's a, that's an interesting thought. Uh, I want to get you out of here, but I thought I would. Uh, read you this as I told you I was feeling nostalgic and so I went through some of my yearbooks came across oh, the sixth no. grade yearbook and I you know does it say some, hags does not say hags uh there were a bunch of hags but no you went you went above and beyond the hags just for me I I felt very special very profound note you wrote me it says Troy I remember when we first met I thought you were mad tall we have had so many memories I am so glad we met. Heart, Hillary. Oh. Wow. You know, honestly, that's like the level of affection that, you know, I give like boyfriends now too. Wow. It's like, I've never been good with the words, with the, the affirmation. I, mean, I thought that was beautiful. Mad tall. I felt very Was special. that even like a, was that even a phrase? I feel like I was before my time. Were you, were you ahead of your time here? Were you a trailblazer? I was. I was. Did I, <laughs> did I start that trend? <laughs> you may have. Uh, I mean, you said that we have many memories. Do, what memories, uh, aside the birthday party, uh, do you have to remember from sixth grade with me? <laughs> do we we used to email. Do you remember that? We emailed? Yes. When? In, in middle school or in, did we instant in, message? No, no. Before AOL, we would straight up email. Wow. Each other. Why? I don't That's know. That's amazing. Because I remember, this is so funny, but I remember I was in like my parents' like 
the office in their house, which like they didn't work at home. It was just like a random room. And I was on Yahoo mail and I was like emailing you and like someone else. And I don't remember, but I remember like sitting in that room, like emailing. Wow. You send like YouTube links. Wow. You're, you're two timing me. I thought I was the only one emailing you. I know. You're, you you didn't even remember. This, this romantic note in my yearbook. <laughs> you make me feel all special. You go with I know. I still try to. I'm going to my parents. I'll have to find the photo of us at my birthday party. <laughs> Please. Yeah, that'd be amazing. We'll, we'll use that to promote this episode. Yeah. You were the first boy I ever had a birthday party. Well, you was it Eugene and Kevin. Eugene was there? Yeah. Kevin, great kid. Full yeah. energy. Yes. Who's your best yes, friend in sixth grade? Oh, my God. In that traumatic time of your life, apparently. I remember that. I, I, re- even... I remember a beef. I think the statute of limitations has passed here. I'll bring it up. There was yeah. there, there was a beef between you and Christina Mueller. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, like we had to yeah. pick sides. Are you Team Hillary or Team Christina? That was very hills of us. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, it was bad. It was very like te- it was bad. Well, damn, I don't even remember what happened. I remember she was my best friend for a little bit. Best, best then, friend, Hillary. I mean, she was she was talking behind her back the whole time. Ugh. You know, but the thing is, when you're new, it's like whoever your your friends are at first, like whatever girl will like give you like an ounce of friendship, you're like best friend. I think in sixth grade. And then uh, Michaela was, oh, like, yeah. was one. Yeah, she was like, she lived down the street from me. Um, My neighbor was like an eighth grader. But she was my friend, so that was pretty cool. Wow. I thought, thought I was a lot cooler than everyone else was. Wow. I bet she was mad cool. She was mad cool. Yeah. She took me camping. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Uh, Hillary, thank you so much for joining me yes. uh, on another riveting episode of the Found Generation <laughs> podcast here. Uh, I'm so happy for you. Please keep me updated on your travels, on your upcoming move to Florida. I wish you all, <laughs> all the best uh, in, Am I going in your to life, Miami? in your career. Miami. Hey, it, did, it didn't specify. Maybe you're going to Miami. Uh, I will let everyone know where they can find you so that they can keep up with your, your very exciting, <laughs> twisting yes. journey. Right. I'll let you know when I figure it out.